Okay, an investor buys a call option with a $25 exercise price, priced at $4, and writes a call option with $40 exercise price, priced at $250. If the price of the stock increases to $50 at expiration, and the options are exercised on the expiration date, the net profit at expiration, ignoring transaction costs, is what? Now, whenever you deal with a question like this, related to a derivative, all right, you must first know what is the structure. Okay, so in the question, right, they buy a call option, okay, at twenty-five dollar exercise price. They also write or sell a call option with a forty dollar exercise price. So basically, the strike of the right call option is higher than the strike of the call, okay, or the long call, all right, option, okay. So essentially, right, this is some form of a bull call spread, okay, or in other words, a uh, debit call spread and you must know uh, what is the purpose of doing this okay basically you want to use the premium received from the call option that was written to offset the call option that was purchased okay so basically the question here ask all right what is the um, overall net effect of this kind of um, spread okay now to do this all right very simple okay whenever you look at options right Okay, one of the ways to understand it, instead of drawing, you know, those payout diagrams, you know, where you have all the different numbers, then you go and calculate, okay, forget it, all right, in your exam, don't waste time doing this, all right, it is very confusing, okay, in, instead, right, look at each option individually, okay, so one way you can do it is, instead of drawing this, you don't have to draw this actually, okay, you don't need to do this as well, all right, just look in terms of the vertical price, I'm sorry, the horizontal price, okay, on the payout diagram, okay. So what you have here is that you have long the call, okay. Let's call this, okay, strike price of the long call, 25, okay, all this, okay, call, uh, okay, remember it's a debit call spread, okay. Now, the put that you, are uh, the call that you wrote has a strike price, Okay, I put it a uh, strike price of the short call is 40. Okay, essentially what it means here is, you know, if you are, if your share price is more than 25, all right, your long call basically is in the money, all right. Once it exceeds 40, okay, you will be starting to go in a loss position because essentially your short call is going to lose money, all right. So the share price right now is $50. Okay, what is the overall okay uh, position? Okay, now let's look at the position of the long call first. All right, right now the share price is fifty dollars. The long call is twenty five strike. So you are in the money. Okay, caller. Uh, okay, that is long. Oops, you are in the money by twenty five dollars. Okay, in terms of the short call. You are out of the money by 10. Okay, and this effect will net off and give you a profit of 15. Correct? Okay. Now, let's look at the position uh, or so called the price position in terms of the payment and the receipt of the premium. Okay, now to long a call, okay, the, the call option is priced at four dollars so you spent four dollars to purchase it okay now the put option you receive 250 okay sorry the call that you shorted let me re redo this all right the short call you received 250 okay so 250 came in this creates a net position okay of negative 150 you pay for receive 2.5 all right now the overall position of this two gives you a overall position of thirteen dollars and fifty cents therefore the answer is oops what's going on with my pad all right the overall position gives you thirteen dollars and Fifty cents. Therefore, the answer is B. Okay, and that is as simple as it would get. 
all right, in terms of looking at the option. Okay, but many people are intimidated by this kind of questions. All right, now how do you resolve this? Okay, a lot of times, right, it starts with understanding what kind of structure the particular um, spread is. So, for example, you must know, all right, if I'm long a call, if I short a put, what is going to be the uh, effect? Okay, or if I hold the stock as the underlying, and then I write a call option, you must know that it is basically a covered call. All right, what is the implication of a covered call? Why do a person do it? And so on. All right. If I do a strangle, a straddle, a butterfly, a condor, all these, basically they are nothing more than just a series of call put spreads. All right, spreading between you know call options and put options at different exercise prices and so on. Okay. So it is important that you know you not be intimidated when you face these kind of questions, but try to break all these components down into its individual portions, like what we did earlier on. In this example, we broke it down into the actual option in terms of its moneyness. And then we look at the cost okay, of the investment. All right, and then we net them up, okay, we get this overall net all right, position. Okay? So again, it is not difficult, all right? So just uh, hopefully this helps you in terms of getting your psychology up back right eh? and then going off back to the proper revision that you are doing. Okay, so do not skip this topic eh? because I believe that um, options will be one of the topics that will be tested frequently all right in fact it's one of the more popular things that they want to test you between you know having a future a swap or an option they will test you more on the option okay